what's up guys welcome back to the channel uh today i'm going to be showing you guys how to replace the rotor rings on any ap kit system um, that goes if you have the uh, ap calipers themselves or the oem calipers uh, with the AP J hook rotors. Uh, there are two piece set. Uh, it's very simple and easy and it's something you can knock out in like an hour, hour and a half only because there's so many screws you got to do. It's a little time consuming, but on the difficulty level, it's, it's very simple. Okay. So here we are. This is my used rotor. Uh, you can see it's not in terrible shape, but not the best of shape either. Um, some slight cracking. I feel like these maybe have like one or two more track days in them before they're absolutely toast. So it was a good idea, good and safe idea to just go ahead and replace them now. And uh, yeah, throw on some fresh ones. So let's get started. First off, obviously take the wheel off the car. Secondly, we wanna go ahead and loosen up these two 10 mil Allen keys. Uh, one right here and then one on the bottom here and uh, go ahead and move the caliper off of the rotor. So after we uh, remove those two bolts, I only got one out, the other one's still in there. It's not screwed in, it's just uh, hanging on by the hole uh, in the caliper, not the actual hole in the, uh, the knuckle. So. Um, what we want to do now is straighten out the wheel. Um, that way it's easier to pop off and we just want to wiggle out the caliper. There we go. It's out. And what I like to do is put something under the caliper. That way it's not resting on the brake line. Let me go grab my box. Now, uh, OEM set screws on the uh, face of the rotor are a little different. I went ahead and replaced mine with some 10.8 uh, or was it 10.9 grade um, stainless steel uh, Phillips screw heads. Uh, but I think these are stars. I think they're T25s, Torx bits. I just like the Phillips head a little better. It's a more common tool as well. and they do the job just fine. Those shouldn't be very tight either. And so here we go. We have the rotor off of the knuckles. So let me go ahead and show you guys how we're gonna remove this rotor ring off the hat. All right, you guys can see this right in front of me, right? This is an eight mil on the front and on the back is a 10 mil. If you notice very closely, let me scoot this up. Every other bolt has a clip every other one has a clip. So remember that because when we reinstall, we need to make sure that it's in the same order. All right. The hat's detached from the ring. Pop out all our studs or all our bolts, sorry, and try and keep this hardware near you. Don't lose it because some of this hardware we're going to need to reuse when we install our fresh hardware. Looking at this ring, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad. Like I said, this was preventative. Uh, definitely doing brakes. I'd rather be preventative than uh, it be an emergency. All right, I think that's a common sense no-brainer. So let's go ahead and get the new hardware. All right, so once we have new hardware on our existing hardware that we need to keep, that is this little piece right here. Oh and a retaining clip on half. And on the other half, it's just that little piece right there. These all need washers on them as well. 
So, let's hand screw some in. Feed through the back. Washer. Eight mil nut. Every other one, right? Done. Let's go ahead and throw this back on the uh, the hub here. Make sure these are very snug. You don't want these getting loose. So yeah, there we are. All right, now to put back on the caliper. An easy way to put back on the caliper, easier way, is to turn the rotor inwards. That way we're not yanking on that uh, brake line too much. Had a couple issues with the Allen bolts in the back of the caliper, but um, those are always kind of like that. They just kind of slide in place randomly and kind of a bitch to, to get correct. So uh, just take your time. Don't strip anything, obviously. Don't cross thread anything. Everything should go in just fine. Um, those caliper bolts have a Loctite on them. So, you know, they may feel like they're a little rough, which uh, is normal for, um, for Loctite. So just be aware of that. It's uh, not anything crazy. So uh, yeah, that is it guys. It's a really simple job. Uh, that took me about half an hour just to do the sides. So, uh, you know, both sides, hour tops. Um, if you're really bad at, at wrenching, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, but yeah, no issues at all. So, uh, brakes are done. Um, we're not using new pads, that's fine. Uh, as long as we use Ferrodo pads this, uh, with our replacement pads, as our replacement pads, um, we'll be just fine. And that's, uh, uh, directly from Frodo themselves. So uh, it's not gonna be an issue to uh, throw on some new Frodo pads after we've already been using the Frodo compound on these rotors. So I'm a big fan of these. Uh, these are DS 111s and 312s in the rear. So really good brake pad. So uh, yeah, that is it. If you guys have any questions, please drop it in the comment section below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Later.